The One Piece live action series trailer highlights some of the ongoing problems with Netflix's genre adaptations. You blew it! Over the weekend, Netflix released its first trailer for the upcoming One Piece live action TV series. They also released a first look at the Avatar The Last Airbender live action show. The reaction to both were, well, decidedly mixed, and it continues a trend of Netflix and some other streaming services trying to capture the look of various beloved genre and fantasy projects without capturing its feel. Witcher fans can probably relate a lot to this one, as Netflix's Witcher franchise has had struggles to the point that its lead star, a Witcher superfan, jumped ship to try to rebirth his Superman career, and then settled on heading up the Warhammer 40k universe project over at Amazon, and like three years ago, everyone thought that The Witcher was going to be the next Game of Thrones. Now, I personally could see why Netflix thinks that the One Piece show will be a hit for the fans. The actors all look the part of their respective characters, perhaps a bit too well, and the sets look very expensive. They're very expensive recreation of the ships and the forts and the islands from the actual One Piece manga. But weirdly enough, everything looks a bit, well, too clean. It all looks a bit too empty. Uh, the, the, the choreography, the fight scenes, it all looks a bit too practiced. And more importantly, it feels like the show is missing that, well, manic spark that really defines One Piece. To be blunt, the One Piece show looks like someone spent $120 million on the most elaborate fan movie ever. As for the Avatar show, well, we only have a few still shots to look at. While the cast looks much more ethnically diverse than the M. Night movie that was made a couple decades ago, the costumes look remarkable and so very clean, which is impressive given that Aang was stuck in an ice sphere for a hundred years, Zuko's on a coal-powered ship, and Sokka and Katara live on an isolated village on the fringe of society in, you know, and, and uh, the Arctic, or the equivalent of the Arctic. Uh, to, to be blunt, there are a lot of comparisons to that M. Night movie, which we all swore to never speak of again, and reaction to the show, well, let's just say that people don't seem to be very high on it at all. And therein lies the big problem with Hollywood raiding the fantasy and genre sections of bookstores looking for their next big hit. People think that they're going to find the next Marvel Cinematic Universe, but they forget that those movies, at least originally, you know, back in the early days, were made by a studio owned by the comic publisher, and that's after they sold off all the rights to their more popular characters, and saw those characters get ravaged by a series of bad films. Blade and the OG Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2, not Spider-Man 3, aside. You want to get to him, you got to go through me. Things like One Piece or The Witcher or Avatar The Last Airbender, they're more than just a story and an aesthetic. They're an atmosphere that Netflix has mostly so far failed to capture in their projects. Now, there are exceptions to this, like when the creators themselves are intimately involved. You know, The Sandman, for instance. There tends to be a little bit more life to those projects, a little bit more, you know, getting it, so to speak. And honestly, that kind of made up for, you know, The Sandman having some of the same too clean, too empty problems as most other Netflix shows. Please, Netflix, hire some extras. I'm begging you. Honestly, I think the One Piece adaptation was always going to be impossible to do well, even with the project being overseen or having some input by the creator Ichiro Oda and the cast and writers clearly having a lot of love for the franchise. It's a massive story. It's still being told after like 1100 or 1200 chapters, I can't keep count, and about a thousand anime episodes. The, the scope of One Piece quickly becomes too grand for what a TV series or a movie could do. There's hundreds of characters with some sort of importance to the story and, you know, that all have a place in many fans' hearts. It would have made more sense, frankly, for Netflix to just do, I don't know, a live-action One Piece movie that tells an original story. Capture the vibe of One Piece and then 
you know, use that to direct fans to the animated One Piece show that, you know, Netflix also has on their streamer. To be honest, you know, we're, we're ragging on Netflix a little bit, but it's not just Netflix that has these problems. Talk to a Wheel of Time fan about Amazon's adaptation. And I'll be honest, I've talked to showrunner Raph Judkins several times, and he clearly loves the books. And he's brought on several, like, super fans, uh, you know, onto the writing staff and as continuity editors. But the problem with that was Judkins knew the challenges of adapting a wide spanning series like Wheel of Time, which has like 13 books to it. And he decided to make the changes that he felt were necessary for converting that series into, uh, you know, 60 episodes or thereabout. And honestly, a lot of people think that that show has not landed. And it also suffers from that same uh, too clean, too empty problem. And, you know, it, at the end of the day, it just had too many cuts and too many, quite frankly, necessary changes to the plot to fit everything in into a limited amount of episodes. And let's not even talk about Lord of the Rings Rings of Power, which is trying to spin out a few appendices into a five season show that has one of the most famous endings ever. I mean, I think everyone is knows how Lord of the Rings Rings of Power ends. You know, choppy choppy with the finger, am I right? Now, to be honest, I hope I'm wrong about One Piece. I, I love One Piece. The cast all seems like swell people, and Oda has wanted a live action version for so long, and I literally want nothing but the best for him. But I really wish that these shows, whether it be Witcher, or One Piece, or Wheel of Time, they still I wish they would stop trying to do the impossible by adapting massive stories into tiny little TV shows, or by trying to become carbon copies of their comic or book counterparts. Capture the spark of the source material, and you'll have a good show. So, what did you think of the One Piece trailer? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons.